Hello there, it's Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. And today we're gonna to be working on this really fun class that I taught my students over in San Rafael. This really great tangle that we have here that is the outcasing of a star and it almost looks like hearts is called Kala. And it is created by Annika Gabrovic. Uh, she is also known as Zen Linea on Facebook. She is one of my all time favorite tanglers and this has become one of my very favorite tangles to do lately and so I taught it the other night and I am looking forward to sharing it with you today uh, so what we're going to be using for class today is I've got just a regular um, mechanical pencil that I'll be using to create our string and then I have our uh, handy dandy Pigma pen. This is one of the great Sakura pens. I love this when I'm traveling and actually I'm traveling today. We are in Venice, California for this one. Um, so you can hear a little bit of a change in my voice or the quality of sound in the video because I'm not at home. Uh, so I have my travel pen with me and these are great because you don't have trouble with these on the planes. The microns have a little trouble on planes. So there it is. Uh, you're also going to need to have a Signo Uniball white pen. You know I love these. They're my favorite. And then uh, I happen to have one of these really handy dandy circle makers. Uh, this is a really nice one because it's small and it can travel. Uh, you can check these out online. They're pretty great. Um, and then finally, what I will be using today is the honeycomb tile from Tangled Yogi. Uh, for this particular one, I was using the tan honeycombs, but unfortunately I didn't bring any of the tans with me when I was traveling, so we are going to do it on a white sugar honeycomb. Okay, so those are the things that you will need for class. Let's get ready to tangle. Okay, so for those of you who have never taken a class with me before, I like to do a little meditation before we get started. It helps me to get grounded and get ready to tangle. So go ahead and sit back in your chair and let your feet make connection with the floor here. Allow your spine to grow comfortably tall, letting your eyes close for a moment, softening in the forehead, in the facial features. Allow just a gentle smile to curve up the sides of your lips. Soften your jaw. Let your shoulders melt away from your ears. Allow the chest to be open, softening and relaxing in the belly, the hips, the thighs, the knees, the calves, the ankles, and the feet. Softening in your biceps and your triceps, your elbows and your forearms. Relaxing in your wrists, your hands. Softening in your fingers. Allowing the entire body to be at ease right here in this space. Letting your awareness come to your breath and just following your breath as it rolls in with your attention and following your breath as it rolls out. Feel the expansiveness of the body as you breathe in and feel the release of the body as the breath rolls out. Following the breath in, following the breath out, following the breath in, and following the breath out. And with each breath that you take here, feeling your body relax even deeper into the chair that you're sitting in. You 
continuing to let your awareness just fall on your breath. Taking one more deep breath right here and let it go with a sigh. <sighs> and then beginning to wiggle in your fingertips and wiggle in your toes. Bringing a little bit of awareness back in by blinking your eyes open. And let's get ready to tangle. Okay, so we're going to get started here. And you can see that I've got my hexagon tile here. This is uh, by Tangled Yogi, and I really love these tiles. I think they're great because they're a little bit larger. I have trouble with my eyes, so doing really small Zen tangles sometimes is really difficult for me. So I'm using the hexagon tile or the honeycomb tile by Tangled Yogi here, which is great. And you can go to tangledyogi.com and pick those bad boys up. They're wonderful. So the other thing that I'm going to be doing today is I'm also going to be doing this tangle on a square tile in case you don't have a hexagon nearby. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say about the, the hexagons is you can always go online and print out a template of a hexagon and practice it that way until you get the really nice tile to work on. Okay, so there you have it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start the regular old-fashioned way in Zentangle and start by creating a string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my hexagon facing with the point up here. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create a line going down the center of the hexagon here. Once I've created that line going down the center of the hexagon, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make a little dot right in the center. That's going to help me to find center. And then I'm going to take my little circle maker here. And once I have my circle maker, I'll lay it down and line it up with that little dot and create my circle to go around the center. Now you can make your circle any size that you want to, but you can see there's the size of the circle that I just made right there. Okay. So once you have that, we're going to start to make more of the string here. I'm going to go from each corner of the hexagon to the center circle. I'm not going to go through it, just to it. So you can see that I'm just creating that line. And you can go ahead and turn your tile and then continue to make your line here. So I'm turning, making my line, turning, making my line until I have what appears to be like a sun with the rays going off into each corner. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next, and if you need to pause me here, this is a great place to pause me. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep on going as I'm going to go around and I'm going to come to each line and I'm going to go up about a quarter of an inch and I'm just going to make a dot. So I'll turn my tile, come up a quarter of an inch and make a dot. Turning my tile, come up about a quarter of an inch, make my dot. Turning my tile, come up, make my dot. Do the same. And last one right here. So it looks like I have little planets orbiting the sun. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the point at the end of each part of the hexagon here. And I'm going to come down about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to make a dot here. So I'll turn my tile and I'm going to just make my dot. So I'm just coming down about a quarter of an inch from the top and making my dot. So those of you who know me, you know that one of my favorite quotes is a line is a dot that went for a walk. That's by Paul Klee, and it couldn't be more to the truth. Yeah. So there you have it. We've got dots all the way around the perimeter and then all the way around the center here. If you need to pause me, this is a great place to pause me. Otherwise, I'm just going to switch over into my black pen here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to connect my lines here. 
And I want you to think of the letter C because that will make this really, really easy for you. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to connect these two points right over here and I'm going to do it with the letter C. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to come in, make a C and come out. Can you see how that looks like a letter C right here? And then I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to start from this point, come in and make the letter C. Turning my tile, coming in, make the letter C. Turning my tile, coming in, make the letter C. Turning my tile, coming in, make the letter C. Turning my tile, coming in, and make the letter C. And you can see what that has done, ha ha ha. I have a star that has now connected. So it has these really nice little triangles and all you had to do was make the letter C, which is pretty easy. So go ahead, do your tile, catch up with me, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so let's continue on here. We're gonna do a really fun part in here. I really love to make these little teardrop shapes and they're pretty easy to make. So you can see that I'm right in the well of where this little C is. And I'm gonna come up about a quarter of an inch so that I'm not hitting the well. And I'm gonna make sure that I just go ahead and I make a little teardrop shape just like so. So see how there's about a quarter of an inch between me and the well right there? I'm gonna make this very, very big for you so that you can really see that. So you wanna make sure that you're leaving that space. That's very important for creating this star. So I'm gonna turn my tile, go to the next place. I'm gonna make my same size teardrop, making sure that I'm leaving lots of space. Turning my tile, coming in, make the teardrop. Turning my tile, coming in, make the teardrop, coming in, make the teardrop, and then finally one more time, making the teardrop. So there you have it. That's the shape and the uh, what you're looking for. So really being mindful here to not let your teardrop touch the star. It's almost like it's um, sending out little little rain droplets as it were. Okay, so if you need to pause me here, this is a great place to pause me. Otherwise, we're going to just keep on keeping on. So remember how we have the dot that came down about a quarter of an inch from the top. Let's make this big for you to see. See this guy right here? So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this inner teardrop with this, or rather this dot with the teardrop. And we're going to connect it with this line right here. Let's make this really, really nice and big here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna take this line and I'm gonna bring it down and I'm gonna let it connect to the teardrop like so. It almost looks like a number six if you look at it this way, right? Can you see how that might be like a really weird uh, elongated six? That's what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my tile now clockwise and I'm going to go to the next one. Here's the next one right here. Here's my dot. I'm going to connect it to the teardrop right here and there's my number six. Turning my tile coming up to the little dot that's below the point here. So you can see I'm not at the point, I'm down below just a little bit. And I'm coming down and there's my number six. Turning my tile, coming down, making the number six. Coming down, making the number six. There's my dot and make the number six. So now when I zoom out, it should look a little something like this. Pretty cool, huh? So if you need to pause me here, this is a great spot to pause me and catch up. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to go all the way around here. So we're gonna start to make more, uh, more moves on this particular tangle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and you can see that here's the connecting point on 
on the teardrop. Can you see that? Here's the connection point. So we're going to come up about a quarter of an inch and just make a little bit of a dot so we know where we're going to be. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to round off and hit the side of the star. Notice how I'm not at the tip. I'm just below the tip here. See how I just round it off and hit the star there? But I'm not at the tip. Okay, so we're going to go around to each one and do the same. So here I go again. I just turned clockwise here and I'm just going to come up from where the connection point is on the teardrop, make a little dot about a quarter of the way up or rather a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to round off and hit the side of the star here. Turning my tile, coming to the next one. Here's the connection point. Come up a quarter of an inch, make your dot and then hit the side of the star. Turning, coming up a quarter of an inch, make your dot, hit the side of the star. One more time, coming up, quarter of an inch, hit the side of the star. One more time, coming up, quarter of an inch, hit the star. So now you have the bottom part of the piece here already getting started, which is going to be really easy. So if you need to pause me here, this is a great place to pause me. Otherwise, we're just going to keep on rolling. OK, so now we are going to go from the top of the hexagon all the way into the piece. And I'll show you what I mean. So here's my pen. and I'm going to just take it from the top of the hexagon. I'm just going to make a little dot so I know where I'm going to start. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to aura this line right here. Can you see that? So I'm just going to take this line. I'm going to aura that line. And then I'm going to come in and hit the side of the star. Notice how I didn't hit the tip. I'm still off the side a little bit. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Let's turn the tile. Let's do it again. Here we are up at the top. Here's the point. We're going to make a little dot as our starting point here. We're going to take that point and we're going to connect it down. All we're doing is auraing that line that's right in front of us. We're going to hit the star, but not at the tip. Turning the tile, here I go, make my dot, and dropping down. Coming in, there it is. Turn the tile, coming in, and dropping down. Turning the tile, coming in, dropping down. Coming in, turn the tile, and dropping down. So there you have it. There is the beginning of our beautiful Kala here. I love this, this tangle, it's so beautiful. Even if you just wanted to leave it like this and do some tangles around it in these spaces right in here, it's almost like spoken with a star in the center. It's so much fun, you can do so much with this. It's just a great tangle. So if you need to pause me here, this is a great place to pause me. Otherwise, we're just going to keep on going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work on the interior of our collar here. So you can see that there's this line right here. This is my interior line. You can also see that there's this line right here. Let's make this nice and big for you so that you can really see what's going on. So you can see this is the interior line and this is my interior line right here. I'm going to connect those two. Watch what happens. I've got this point right here and then you can imagine that this line would carry out underneath and connect. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to connect right there. See how those two lines now are almost going all the way through together? Now I'm going to come up to this line right here. This is my exterior line. I'm going to bring that to meet it. So all I'm going to do is just let that drop right down and voila, we have the beginnings of the completed part of the star here. I'm going to turn. Here we are coming down. So here's the centerpiece dropping in and then here's the exterior piece. Voila. Did that light just turn on for you? That's where it turned on for most of my students in the library. So I'm turning my tile, coming to the center piece, letting those two center lines connect. See how these two lines are going to connect? They're just underneath this line right here. Turning and getting in there. 
Now these two lines are connecting. So I'm just gonna turn my tile and keep on rolling. So here I go, one and two. And then here's the last two that are coming up right here. So I'm just gonna bring this in so you can really see it. One and two. And here comes the last one right here. And then if I zoom out, da 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 da, we have our nice star. Isn't that so cool? So now you could just go hog wild with this and stick every tangle in the book in here. I mean, you could do a different tangle in each one and have a blast with it. So this is a really fun tangle to do. I'm going to take you on a little journey with the uh, tangles that we did in this one. But feel free to, you know, knock off and go do whatever you want and then come back in and learn some color techniques. It's all good with me. I'm, I'm in for the, the creativity of it all. So that's how you would do it on a hexagon. But let's talk about this on a square tile here. So if you need to catch up with me, pause me here. And if you're going to do a square one, this is a great place to go grab your square tile. I'll see you in a minute. So let's just talk about this one now on a square shape. So you can see that I have my square shape here and I've got it set on the diamond just so that I can work with it um, a little bit more easily. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and you can see I have my pencil again and I'm just going to come down from the top and I'm just going to move straight down to the bottom of the tile at the best way that I can. Then I'll turn my tile and I'll do the same thing all over again. So I'm just going to come in and do the same thing all over again. Easy peasy. You can see here's my line of intersection here, which is great. So that tells me where the center of the tile is. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab my little circle maker here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a little bit bigger circle because uh, we're working in the square shape and it can support that. So I'm going to find the center here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a bigger circle. So there's my larger circle right there in the center. And then I'm going to do just the same exact thing that I did the last time. So I'm going to come up about a quarter of an inch from the center and I'm just going to make a dot. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'm just going to come up a quarter of an inch, make my dot. Do the same thing right here, make a dot, and then last one right here, making my dot. Then I'm going to come down from the tip and come about a quarter of an inch, make the dot. Come down about a quarter of an inch, make the dot. And one more time, quarter of an inch, last one right here, about a quarter of an inch. So if you need to pause me here, go ahead and do so, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've got everything here and I've grabbed my pen so I'm ready to rock and roll here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come now and connect my pieces. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from this point right here and I'm going to make that C curve that we were talking about earlier. So I'm just going to come in, make that C curve and then jump right out again. Turning my tile, come in, make that C curve and jump out. So I'm touching the circle all the way around here. So I'm just coming in and jumping out, connecting my lines, and one more time for good measure. And so now you should have something that looks a little bit like this. It almost looks like a little star, but a little bit different. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my tile now so that the top is, um, is flat here. And I'm going to come into this well area where we have the depth. And I'm just going to come up about a quarter of an inch because I want to make sure that I don't touch the well. And I'm just going to make a dot just to let myself know not to go past that point. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a nice robust circle right there. I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Coming up about a quarter of an inch, make a dot, and then make a nice robust circle. Turning my tile, coming up about a quarter of an inch, make that nice robust circle. 
And last one right here. Coming up, quarter of an inch, and make that robust circle. So once you have that, we're going to go back to working on the diamond here. So if you need to pause me, this is a really great place to pause me. Otherwise, we're just going to keep on rolling. All right. So now you can see that I have that point from the top that I've been working with, that point that comes down about a quarter of an inch. It's the same exact thing as we did on the other one. All we're doing is we're just connecting to the side of the circle. So I'm just going to come in, take that piece, and I'm going to let it connect to the side of the circle. See how that happened? Easy peasy. Turn your tile. Here we go again. And connect. Turning your tile. Come to that point And connect. One more time. Here we go. And connect. Isn't that so fun? I love this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to work with the interior part here. So I'm going to come in right where that point of connection is, and I'm going to come up a little bit more than I did on the other one. Probably this is about a half an inch, and I'll come in and just make a little dot there. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to round off, and I'm going to hit the side of that star. See how I did that? Not at the tip. I'm just a little bit below. I'm going to turn my tile. Here's the point of connection coming up about a half an inch. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit. See how it's rounding as it comes in here. Turning my tile. Come up about a half an inch. Round off and hit. Turning my tile. Come up about a half an inch. Round off and hit. So there you have it. So let's keep on rolling with this. Are you ready? Do we need to pause? If you need to pause, go ahead. This is a good spot. Otherwise, keep on rolling with me. So I'm going to go up now to the tip of the tile here. I'm just going to make a little dot right at the tip. And here I go. All I'm going to do is I'm going to aura this line right here. So I'm just auraing this line. I'm coming down, down, down. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to hit the side of the star, not at the tip. Easy turning my tile, make my dot at the top, and then I'm going to come down, 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 round off, and hit the side of the star, just like so. Turning my tile, coming down from the top, rounding it out, down, down, down. Here we go, last one right here. Coming down, rounding off, and hitting. If you need to pause me here, this is a great place to pause me and catch up. Otherwise, we're just going to keep on going. So here I am right in here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to connect my internal lines. You can see here's my internal line right here. I'm going to take this line right here and I'm going to let it connect. So I'm just going to come down and then right before I'm going to imagine that I was going to cross over and let it hit, but I'm not going to cross over. Then I'm going to go to the exterior and I'm going to let the exterior come down and let it hit. Just like so. Turning the tile, coming to the next one right here. Here's my interior. Here's the interior line. I'm just going to pretend that it's coming all the way up to go to it. Down, down, down. Nice rounded edge. Down, down, down. Nice rounded edge turning my tile, coming right in, coming down to that tile, or coming down to that line. There it is, connecting. There it is, connecting. Last one right here. Let's do this one with vigor. Coming right down. And then this one right here, coming right down. So that when I zoom out, you can see, there it is, the whole piece right in there. Pretty cool, huh? So you can do it on a square, you can do it on a hexagon, you can do it in a triangle too, which is a lot of fun. So go ahead, 
do your piece, have fun with it. We're going to continue on with the hexagon, but if you want to uh, float with us in, uh, in the square form, if that works best for you, then go ahead and keep on with us in the square form. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're back with the hexagon here, and we're going to start to work inside of the central area here. Now, one of the reasons why I didn't have you overdraw on the circle is sometimes people get really intimidated with circles. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to round off our corners here. So you can see that I've got these little triangles, and all I'm going to do is just round off by using that circle as a guideline for rounding off those triangles here. So you can see that I'm just moving my piece around and rounding off those triangles just like so. It makes it so much easier and it's less intimidating than having to overdraw on that circle. And you can see I did a pretty good job this time. I'm gonna put a little, give myself a little back pat there. Woohoo, that's a nice, nice little going over. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come into each of these triangles and we're gonna start to puddle. And puddling means you're just laying down ink. And you can see that I've got my, uh, my Sakura in my hand. And all I'm going to do is just barely touch the paper. And you can see that that ink is flowing right out of that pen. Now notice that my pen is not going like this. It's going like this. It's a circular-like motion. So when you go in a circular-like motion, you don't end up getting scratchy lines. And you can see that I've got a little debris on the side here, like there's a couple of little things over here. So I can kind of come in and clean up my lines if I want to with my black pen. And it's just fine with me to just kind of get in there and clean it up. That's what I love about puddling is that you can go in and clean up whatever you want. So I'm just going to keep on going around and puddling inside of the star. So notice, see how that pen is moving in its circular-like motion? And my pen is just barely touching the page. Because when we apply a lot of pressure and we put a lot of ink down, you can tear up your paper no matter what kind of paper you're working with. Okay, so go ahead, do the rest of your star, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and do my little teardrops here. So I'm just going to go in and puddle into those teardrops. Remember, keep your pen working in that circular-like motion. And then just keep on moving through. So you can see that I'm just going to go around to each teardrop and do each one. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around. And then I went ahead and I grabbed my square tile and I did the same thing on the square one as well. So you can see that I've filled in all the triangles on here and I've filled in all the circles over here. So if you're working on the square one, you'll go ahead and do the same thing. So we're gonna start to work inside of our petals here and we're gonna create these really pretty lotus tangles that I absolutely love. So. You can hear there's a plane going overhead right now. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm actually traveling right now, so I'm not in my regular place where I record. All right, so here we go. So we're going to start to build inside of the petal here. So I'm going to come up about halfway through the petal, and I'm just going to make a little dot just like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a leaf almost like a bay leaf that connects to my star. Can you see how that happened? Make this nice and large for you. Once I've made that bay leaf, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let another petal jump off the side. And you'll notice that I got really close to the edge. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump right back into the center. I'll do the same thing right over here. Get really close to the edge and then jump right back to center. So there we have the beginning of our little uh, lily uh, lotus pad, if you will. And then finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to the top here, I'm gonna make a little dot, and I'm gonna go ahead and add one more really large uh, lotus leaf into it, okay? 
So we're going to go around into each one of the petals and we're going to do that. So I'm just going to turn my tile and do it again. So I'm going to come in right here. I'm going to come up halfway and make a dot. Then I'm going to make my little leaf like shape. And then I'm going to go ahead and jump off the side. Jump off the side. There's the beginning of our lotus. Now I'm going to go ahead and create that tall part of the lotus right in there. So go around, finish up these. If you're working in the squares, you can still do the same thing inside of the squares and it'll be gorgeous. So go ahead, give it a try, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see I've had a chance to go ahead and add the lilies into each one. And I even had a chance to do it inside of the square one and it looks really cool. So we're gonna start to build a little bit more off of this here. And this next part is easy peasy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn my piece so that it's laying flat on the top. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a little crescent moon action here. So I'm just gonna come up make a little crescent moon that connects and then I'm going to do an aura right behind my crescent moon. So I'll turn my tile, go around and do an aura behind the crescent moon. Okay, so you go around all the way around in between your petals and do your crescent moon and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around on the square, and I've had a chance to go all the way around on the hexagon here. So let's continue on with this hexagon. We're going to start to build another flower into the piece here. So I'm going to take this, and I have it so that the flat line is up at the top here. I'm going to come up to the top just before the edge and just make a little dot. And this is a place of reference for me so that I know that I don't go past it. All I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend like I'm making that bay leaf that I started with earlier on in the lily. And then I'm going to come right in here and I'm going to arc out on each side, almost like I'm making a cloud. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and make a C-like shape right in here. You'll see. Ha ha ha. There's my C. And then here's another backwards C. And it almost looks like a crown sitting on top of the circle here, which I really love. I think it's kind of a sweet little flower. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to detail the flower by going and making a fairly long line and then a shorter line and a shorter line and a shorter line. And so we'll go and we'll do that all the way around the piece. So I'm just going to turn, come to the next one, make my dot so I don't go off the edge, coming in, arcing out, so I'm making that lily-like shape, then I'm going to go ahead and make, like I'm going to make a cloud, make my C-curve, connect in, make another C-curve but backwards, and then I'm going to come up and I'm going to make a line and a shorter line and a shorter line until I go all the way down. And you'll go all the way around and you do those little pieces. And you can do the same thing inside of the square. So go ahead, do your pieces, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around with this piece here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with color. Yay, color! You know it's my favorite. So go ahead and start to pick out the color that you want to see in the center of your piece. Uh, we're going to work our way from the inside out and get ourselves into something really fun. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a really nice orange. Now, something to keep in mind when you're working with color here, I'm just going to flip this bad boy over. Remember, your pencil is three different colors. It's light, it's medium, and it's dark. So when you're working with colors, remember that you want to use a certain amount of pressure. So when you want lighter colors, you use a lighter pressure. When you want medium color, you go with medium pressure. And when you want really nice, rich colors, you go with the darker pressure. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw this over here. 
And we're gonna start with this really nice orange. So I'm gonna start in the center here. I'm gonna make this nice and uh, clear for you. So I'm gonna go in with that nice orange and I'm starting with my lightest pressure first. Now notice where my hand is on that pencil. My hand is way, way back on the pencil. A lot of the time I see people with their hands way up here when they're doing shading. And the trick is to back up on the pencil to get nice light tension. So I'm really far back on the pencil and you can see that my pencil is moving in a circular like motion. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. You can see how that pencil is moving. And that's what ends up giving me a really nice soft misty feel with the pencil. Okay, so I've just started now with that very, very light color. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a little bit more color. I'm coming up a little bit more on my pencil. Can you see that? And I'm gonna put a little bit more pressure on that pencil to get that really, really nice, uh, deep, rich orange that I'm going for here. I really love this color, it's a great color. So I'm gonna go in and start to fill in about halfway through that lightest orange here. Now, I'm gonna come up even further on my pencil now, because now I'm starting to get into the heavier pressure. And you can see that just by coming up on the pencil a little bit more, now I can start to apply that heavier pressure to the pencil to get that really, really cool um, color just really nice and rich and you can see that I'm just kind of skirting on the outside edge of the top here just so that I can get a little bit of definition now if you want you can always grab a little bit of a darker color just to give yourself a little bit more intensity so I had this really nice orange here but if I want to get a little bit more richness out of it I can grab this nice dark red you can see how nice that is and I'm just gonna barely dust the edge with a very, very light pressure. Notice how I said light pressure because it's a darker color and I'm just lightly skating on the edge with some of that darker red just to give it a little bit of dimension and it just gives it such a pretty, pretty look to it. Pencil's still moving in that circular like motion because we don't want a hard edge. And then I can go back in with that orange and just lightly start to blend it in to erase any kind of line of demarcation in there. And you can see how gorgeous that turned out. It almost gave it kind of a sunburst kind of feeling, didn't it? So go ahead, pick your color. Now you know what to do for the center. Go for it. I'll see you in a minute. I'm really enjoying this here. So what we're going to start to do now is we're going to do something I like to call carrying color. And this just helps the eye to land in different parts of a piece. It's just taking the eye and moving it around. And by taking one color and moving it around on the piece here, it gives the eye a place to, to stop and rest. So what we're going to do is we're going to start in with this lotus here. And I'm going to come in very, very lightly and notice how far back I am on that pencil. And I'm going to very softly start to shade in that lotus. Now once I've lightly shaded in that lotus, I'm going to climb up on that pencil a little bit more so I have control. And I'm going to very, very lightly now start to go up about halfway with medium tension. And then once I've done the medium tension, I'm going to go ahead with a really nice heavy pressure right at the bottom. Now I can always go and grab some of that nice dark red and just give it a little bit of a blush right on the bottom of the lotus here. And then I can come in with my orange and just softly blend it in very lightly just to give it a little bit of that line of um, softness. So often we get that line of demarcation, which is like that heavy, heavy line, and we, we want to keep it nice and soft. So that's the trick for here. So we're going to go all the way around and do all of our lotuses just like that. I'll see you in a minute. 
Okay, so you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around with those lilies and they're really quite lovely, those lotus flowers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and you'll notice that there's a little bit of a line of demarcation. Can you see how I've got a little bit of a hard line right in here in between my lightest and my darkest? So I want to do a little bit of blending and one of the things that I like to do is I like to use white to blend. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to start to get nice and blendy inside of the very lightest part and then I'm going to light dip into the darker piece just to give it some softness see how that totally blends that out and gives it a softness same thing over here I'm just going to lightly blend in right here and it makes that color so much more creamy and soft and then the same thing right over here just a nice light blend so it just gives it a very ombre kind of feeling instead of where a line of demarcation is so if you've got a nice white pencil and I'm not talking about the charcoal pencils I'm talking about a Prisma pencil or one that's in your your coloring box um, that's what I want you to use and the reason that I like this pencil over a regular blender pencil I find blender pencils to be a little bit scratchy whereas the white gives it a creaminess and a softness that um, just makes it blend up more like a pastel instead of like a color pencil so you can see that I'm just very very lightly going around and just being mindful to soften those pieces there and that's just going to give it just that little bit of something that makes the piece a little bit more special. You know, it's these little tricks, I think, that can really make a difference in a piece. It can take a piece from being just meh to something that's like, wow, so cool. Okay, so now that you know about the white pencil, we're gonna start to move on to another part of the piece here. So we're gonna put that, that color away just for a little while. We will be bringing it back out, so don't put it away too far. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work on the, um, the, the big petal that's inside of the lotus here. And you'll notice that I've got a purple with me, but I'm also going to take this really nice magenta and work these two together. So I'm going to start with the magenta first, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring it right into here and see how I'm just going very, very lightly with the purple. I'm just bringing that in and very lightly shading in this area. And so once I have that, now because this pencil is so small, I am up a little bit on it just because I need to have a little bit of control. But notice how I'm not here, I'm back here still, okay? So I've got that really nice soft, soft di distribution of color. And then I'm gonna take my purple and I'm very, very lightly gonna start to blush that purple into the bottom of the beautiful petal that we have here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to give it a little bit more intensity. So notice how I'm climbing up on that pencil a little bit more and giving it a little bit more intensity. And I'm just going up and over the petal that's up in the front. See how that's happening? Just giving it that nice softness. Now I can always go back in with that original magenta and start to blend out any line of demarcation that might be happening. And that gives it much more of an ombre type of feeling. So this is a nice blending technique that you can always do. You go back with the original color. And then if you feel like you're getting too much of a line of demarcation at the top, that's when you grab your white pencil and blend it out and get it nice and soft. Okay, so I'm going to have you go around to all of the big petals that you have in here and uh, put in that color, whatever color you like. You don't have to follow my color scheme. You can do your own color scheme. Remember, I am just taking you for the ride, but you are the artist here. I'll see you in a minute. So you can see, look at how pretty this is coming along. I love these colors. These colors are so fun together. So we're going to carry our color one more time here. We're going to take that really beautiful purple that we started with and we're going to go out into these really pretty little crowns or flowers, however you best want to describe them. And so you can see that I'm just going in with that really pretty magenta color first. And I'm just laying down a very, very 
very light version of that magenta. Once I've had a chance to put that in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab that purple again. And now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of that blush of purple. You can see that I'm not going very hard with it. I'm just doing about a medium tension. Notice how that pencil is working in the circular like motion here. It's not going back and forth like this. It's moving in a circle. So we want to remember to do that. And then finally, I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on that pencil and just gently go across the um, area where the black is for my crescent moon. And once I've got that nice darkened piece there, I'm going to go ahead, grab that magenta one more time, softly blend in the two. And then I will grab my lighter color and very, very lightly blend in to the very, very tips of the crown so that we get a very, very nice soft edge to it. And isn't that lovely the way that those work together? So once again, getting that really beautiful ombre into here. So I go from light to medium to dark, really nice. Okay, so go around, do your crowns, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around the piece here. Now we're going to start to let go of the purple and move into our next color. And I've got this really gorgeous minty green that I really want to throw in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these two colors. I've got a nice minty green and then a forest green that I'm going to use. I'm going to come into this area right here and I'm going to start to lightly shade, not unlike how I did with the beginning where I'm going to come in here and bring in some of that nice soft shading. Really, really light, not a lot of pressure, just getting that color established in the area. Now, once I've had a chance to do that, and let's make this a little bit bigger so you can really see what I'm up to, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add that darker color, and you'll see that I'm not adding it really hard. I'm actually giving it a really light blush of that darker color, I'm not pressing hard. So once I got that nice blush of the darker color coming in about halfway up, I'm going to go ahead and right along the line here, you can see this nice black line, I'm pressing a bit harder on that pencil just to get a little bit more intensity with it. Now I'll go back to the original pencil that I started with and softly start to blend those two together. That way I don't lose the softness of the medium and the light and it also helps me to blend out that line of demarcation which we don't want to have. So you can see how beautiful that is in there with that nice dark color and then the lightness up at the top. So you're going to go around to all of your circles and do the very same thing. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around here with the green. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to add a little bit more uh, color into it. Actually, I'm going to add a little gray into it. And so what I want to talk about is, um, and I, I talk about this a lot in my videos, I'm left-handed and so I end up wearing graphite on the side of my hand. If you only have a graphite pencil and you are right-handed, this is just fine for you. But for my lefties out there, I do enjoy a good gray color pencil. They're really wonderful to work with and very, very helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking that gray pencil and we're going to start to work in the star itself. That's this part that I'm talking about here, the little curly cues that we have going on. So I'm going to come in very, very lightly, and the gray that I'm using actually, just to give you a heads up about it, is the 50% gray from, um, from Prisma. I do enjoy the Prisma color pencils. I think they are the best on the market for what they do. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in very, very lightly with that light gray that I have here and 
I want to make sure that I'm just barely touching the page with it. Gray has a tendency to get dark very quickly. If you're using graphite, just go very, very lightly with the graphite as well, um, because it does have a tendency to end up looking a little bit dirty by the time you're done with it. So we want to make sure that we're keeping it nice and light. And you can see that I'm going around into the little uh, swirls in here and making my way around through here and making my way around and through here as well. And this is just to demonstrate what we're going to be doing with the rest of it. So I've gotten myself all the way around here and you can see that this whole area is now in the gray. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to go just right here just for a moment and I want to make it look like this is overlapping on top of this one. So I'm going to come in and very, very gently now go ahead and do some shading right on each side of that line. Can you see how that's happening by just coming in with a little bit of that medium tension? And then once I've got that medium tension in there, I'm going to gently taper off. So you can see that as we get to the end of this here, I'm just lightly lightening up my pencil. Now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to apply even stronger pressure to the area that's really, really close to this line and make sure that it really looks like a nice shadow here. Now at this point, if you had a Tarshan and you wanted to do some blending out with that, you could. Um, I'm just enjoying the gray pencil and having it work for me. So I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm going to very, very lightly again come back in, and this is with the medium tension now, so I should rephrase that, not as light as before. And I'm coming in and I'm going to go about, mm, I'm gonna say a quarter of the way down from the tip here. And you can see that I've left a little light in the center. Now I'm also gonna come in right above the curl here and do a little bit of shading in here. And you can see that I'm leaving lightness right there. So. Once I've got that, now I've got this area right here that I can shade in. So I'm gonna come over here and shade right in here. I'm using that medium tension, same thing over here, a nice medium tension. And then I'll come back in with a heavier tension just to give it a pop. And you can see how much that does just for that little petal in there, right? So now you could even come in over here a little bit and add a little bit of that medium tension just to give a little bit of interest in that corner here. I'm going to grab my white pencil and I'm going to start to gently blend off the edges over here and over here and then I'll come over here as well. So these are blending and then I'm going to lightly blend in right here and right here. So really soft, misty color. You can see that I'm just lightly cleaning up. That side needs a little bit more darkness, so I'm going to give it a little bit of darkness right in here just to get it to have a little bit of interest. So what you're going to do is you're going to go all the way around and do that to each one of the petals as you go around. Okay? I'll see you in a minute. Take your time. Take a deep breath. Let it go and have some fun. Really coming along here. This is really, really fun. So I'm really enjoying the way that the shadowing is working. It's really giving that a little bit more dimension, which is a lot of fun. So we're gonna start to work now inside the areas around where the lilies and the big petals are. And I'm gonna actually carry some color here. I'm gonna come back to that really pretty green that I had earlier. So I'm gonna come in with that green and start to lightly shade in here. And I'm going all the way around that pretty little lotus that's in there. And then once I've had an opportunity to get all the way around that lotus, I'm going to come back in with my darker green. So here's my darker green and I'm going to start to shade with that medium tension and I'm going to let it come about three quarters of the way up. So I'm just going in with that medium tension, letting it come about three quarters of the way up here. 
And once I have it going about three quarters of the way up, you can see that I'm still working in that circular like motion with the pencil here. Once I've done that, now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to give it nice pressure to get some of that nice deep dark green that I'm looking for. Really get that richness that I'm that I'm going for here. And that's just going to give a lot of gravity to the piece and make it really pop. So once I've had an opportunity to do that, I'm going to go in very gently with my white at the top and just blend those edges so that the tip now looks like it has a little bit of white in there. So it really gives that a nice pop. And so what we're going to do is we're going to carry that all the way around the piece. So go ahead, do your petals, and then we have one more part to do and we are finished. So how exciting is that? Go ahead, enjoy yourself, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around with that green and it is so luscious. I'm really enjoying that. So I'm gonna come back in with my orange that I started with in here um, in the beginning of class and we're coming full circle as it were. And I'm just gonna start in this section right here at the top so you can really get an idea of what I'm up to. So I'm going to go ahead very, very lightly with that pencil and shade in the area around that little crown or flower, whatever you want to refer to it as. And you can see that I'm letting that pencil move in that circular motion because we want to get that kind of misty soft feeling to it. We don't want to have any scratchy lines or anything like that. So once I've filled that in, I'm going to go back around and start to add a little bit more shading into this area right here. So you can see that I'm adding a little bit more of that shading and getting into that medium tension really, really nicely. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of that red that we were talking about in the beginning of class. So you remember how I added just a little bit of blush of red at the bottom of these lotuses? So now I'm going to add a little bit of a blush of red right at the bottom of this medium shading just to get a little bit more intensity out of the shading here. So I've got that red coming in and I'm going to come over here as well. Let's get this nice and uh, big for you so that you can see it. So once I have that, that nice shading, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab that orange pencil again and I'm going to blur off the edge a little bit. So I'm just running that edge right over the top of the red just to get it to blur off and give it a little bit of softness. Now, once I've done that, we're going to do some wallpaper. And this is a little bit different than what I did with my class at um, the San Rafael Public Library. Now you can see that I have a line of demarcation in here that I'm not happy with. So I'm running in there with a little bit of my white just to soften it. So you can see that I'm getting in there and softening that up so that it isn't such a strong line that's in there. Everybody see that? Now, once I've done that, I'm going to come in with that red. And remember, you don't have to press hard to get the kind of um, line that you need here. So here I am. We're going to do some wallpaper. And we're going to use Pronton, the Tangle Pronton. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and make a nice big Pronton right in here. So you can see that I'm moving right around that little flower in there. Let's make this nice and big for you. I always like to do variation in size when I'm doing wallpaper so that it makes it more interesting for the eye. So these printemps that I am doing right now are big printemps. Now well, the idea with wallpaper is that we want it to blend into the background. We don't want them to be in the foreground. We just want it to be a feeling that there's more tangles in there. So I'm going to come up in here now and I'm going to do some smaller tangles. And here's another one that's going to be a little bit smaller. And I think I can squeeze in some baby ones right over here 
and maybe a baby one over here. And you might have to sharpen up on your pencil. But you can see the nice energy that that gives to the piece. It gives it a really nice softness in the background, but it has something going on with it. It's not just a bland thing. It really just gives it that little pop that you wouldn't have normally. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out for you. And then you can really see what that looks like in there and see how that orange really brings your eye from the center outward outward same thing with the purple it's bringing your eye outward so that's why we're using this idea of carrying color so i'm going to start to go into all of these little spots over here and do just that and i'll see you in a minute okay so here we are how cool is that it has just gone from very quiet to extremely electric, which I always get a kick out of. So we are going to bring out that Signo pen that we talked about earlier in class. This is one of my favorite ways to add finishing touches to a piece that just takes it to the next level, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by adding some highlights to the piece. And I'm just going to blow this up so you can really see what I'm up to. So I'm going to start inside of the large petal here. And I'm going to, if my pen will allow me, because these are very cranky pens, I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight right up here in the piece. And then I'm going to add a couple of dots on either side of the highlight like so. And you can see as I go around, what that's going to do is it's just going to bring a little bit more interest into the piece just by having a little bit of a highlight. So I'm going to go around and do that. And in a minute here, I'm going to zoom out for you to see the difference between which petals have it and which petals don't. So you can see on the petals that have it, there's a little bit more movement in them, and the petals that don't, they're a little bit more soft and muted. So if you want to go ahead and use the white in the petals, that's one way to go about doing it. Another way to go about doing the, uh, the piece here is to add a little bit more into the main petal, which is right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my pen is working. And then I'm going to come in right here and from the tip down, I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of a line and then a couple of dots just like so. And you can see that that also brings in a little bit more interest to the piece. So I'll go back into the ones that I just did with the highlight on the outside and then put these on the inside and you can see that that also brings a little bit more electricity to the piece, right? So you can see the difference between the ones that have and then the ones that don't. And then another way that we can use the pen, and feel free to pause at any time if I'm going too quickly here. I'll use this guy as a really good example since there's a lot of green in here, making sure that my pen is working. I'll come right in here and I will add a little bit of a V into the piece and then a couple of dots on either side and that's a really fun way to add a little bit of electricity into the piece as well. So I'll come in right here and add a little bit in here and then I'll come up over in here and do the same thing. So once again you can see when you add a little bit of that white what it does. This one versus what goes on in this one. Just a little bit more interest not a lot, but just a little. So now I'm going to phase myself out just a little bit here so that you can see what I'm up to. I'm now going to go inside of the star and I'm going to come into each point of the star and I'm going to add a little white dot inside of each point just to give that a little bit of a pop. And that's really, really fun. You could even go up into these lotuses right here and just add three dots going right up the center. I'll come in over here and do the same thing right here. And we'll do one more over here just for fun. And then lastly, another place that you can add a little bit of interest with the white pen is you can come into the crown, which is right here. You could come in and add a little bit of white 
right into the crown pieces, which is really, really fun. So I encourage you to play around with the white pen as a finisher um, just to see what you can do with this and make it that much more interesting. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we have finished up the piece here. I'm very happy with the way this one turned out. I just love the colors. The colors are so electric and beautiful. I love that orange with the purple. It just glows. This is a really fun piece for me to do. I love this because it's so different every time I sit down and try this particular tangle. It's had a few different incarnations. I'll show you the first one that I did with it and I, I just absolutely loved um, the way this one came out. It had a little bit more tranquility to it with all that purple. And then I taught a more rustic version of it to my students at the library where I didn't actually put in any color around the background. I actually let that brown sugar honeycomb be the color, uh, which I really, really loved. And then I did another one at home after that, and it had more of an explosive energy. It was just very electric, and that was really fun. But the one that caught me the most off guard was the one that I was playing with when I was hanging out with you guys. So this is that square tile that I was working with, and what I did in the background is instead of adding color, I used black, and it really made the whole thing pop. The other thing that I did was is I added tipple into the composition and then just shaded a little bit into the tipple. So you can see that each incarnation changed over time and brought a different kind of energy to the piece, which I always like to encourage people to come back and try it again and try it again and try it again and see what happens because we're not the same person the very first time we sit down to do this and we definitely won't be tomorrow or the day after that. So there you have it. Here is our beautiful piece. So I thank you all for taking the time to try the video. And uh, just a couple of things to note. Uh, this particular tile was done on the Sugar Honeycomb. Uh, and it's a really great tile. You can get it at tangledyogi.com. That's our store here. I'd love for you to try them. This is really, really nice paper. And you know what Rick and Marie always say, if you want great results, use nice materials. And I really strive to make a really nice tile for you guys. The other thing to note is the original piece that I did at the library was done on a brown sugar honeycomb, which is the tan, and I love this one too. If you guys have tried my rustic tiles, you know that they're really nice, smooth paper, so they're great, and I hope you'll check those out at the Tangled Yogi store. And then finally, there's the square tile, which is done on the Genesis, which is a really fun tile to work on. It's one of my favorites, and that is also at the Tangled Yogi store. So if you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, uh, please give us a thumbs up. It helps us get a little bit more traffic on YouTube so people can find us. And um, if you'd like to join our Facebook page, please join us at the Tangled Yogi Art Community uh, page. It would be so nice to have you there and share your work, share your process and how, how it made you feel. And hopefully you'll really enjoy the people that you'll meet on the site. I always enjoy meeting my other uh, fellow Tanglers. We're, we're a pretty nice bunch. And if you want to see all of the upcoming classes, please join the Tangled Yogi page. That is also on Facebook as well. Okay, so once again, my name is Rami Marks. I'm your Tangled Yogi. Thank you so much for joining us. And I can't wait to see your work. Until we tangle again, bye for now.